In the last video, we figured out how to overflow the return address at the end of the program. We found the offset, and that offset was 40, uh, which I just jotted down there. Offset 40 is where the segmentation fault begins. And so the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to find a gadget or you know method that will pop values into RDI, RSI, and RDX. And again, just as a point of reference here, in order to call the call me one, call me two, and call me three, um, it's saying that it wants this string to be the first parameter, this string to be the second parameter, this string to be the third parameter, and those are going to go into RDI, RSI, and RDX. So we need to figure out how to get those registers to contain these strings. And that's where we can use our ROP gadget program. So I'm going to go ROP gadget hyphen hyphen binary and then call me. And this is going to return a list of useful gadgets that will do things for us. Um, and as we look through this, it's kind of a, a long list. But because we know this is a very simple gadget that we're looking for, we see here that there is indeed a method here that's going to do that for us in this program. There's one that does a pop RDI, pop RSI, and pop RDX. So this will look at whatever's on the stack. It'll take the top of the stack. It'll place it into RDI. It'll take the top of the, the next top of the stack. It'll pop it into RSI, and the next pop... Uh, into RDX and then it'll run a return so whatever's on the top of the stack after popping these three things off it will go to. So if we can populate RDI, RSI, and RDX with these three things and then pop off the return address of call one method, call me one, um, it, it should work. It should do what we want it to do. So this right here is the address of this method or gadget. So I'm going to take note of that and I'm going to put my uh, useful gadget address here just so I have that written down of uh, this. And we're going to do this two different ways. We're going to do it manually and then I'm going to show you how Pwn Tools can automate this so you don't even have to remember these addresses. Sweet. So the next thing we want to do is we've got our gadget. We need the addresses of the call, call me one, call me two, and call me three methods that are inside of this program that they're telling us exist. And that's where we're going to use Radare. So I'm going to use R2 call me. And the first thing we're going to want to type in order to analyze this is we're going to go A, 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 A. So you put four A's. And looking up R2 and learning all the different things you can do with it is an ongoing process for me as well. Um, but I'm going to analyze this with AFL. And there's a pretty easy to find cheat sheets and what this stuff means. But if I type AFL at this point, we can see that we do have three methods here in my program. Call me one, call me two, call me three. Um, and they all have addresses here. Uh, call me three is 004006F0740720. So these three addresses are uh, the addresses of these methods. We're going to want to push the program to these addresses, right? So I'm going to go ahead and copy those, and I'm just going to drop those in my notes right now just because we are going to need those here in a little bit. Okay, so we've got uh, pretty much everything we need here. We've got the strings that we want to load into our different registers. We've identified a gadget that will pop the top of the stack into those three registers. And we've got a list of the methods that they're telling us to call. So once we've got all that jotted down uh, in the next video, we'll start to write our Python program.